What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope you guys are doing well and today I'm actually going to be talking about Luca Vildoza. As you guys know, I did actually make like a film breakdown video on Luca Vildoza, but I know there's some people that like film breakdown videos and there's other people that like like these types of formatted videos of me in front of the camera just telling you guys like what does Luca Vildoza do well and what does he need to work on? Of course, we went out there and signed Luca Vildoza to a four-year $13.6 million contract. The first year is guaranteed. The past or the last three years are not guaranteed. It's going to be really interesting to see how we handle the point guard situation. Of course, he still does need a pass. Like, of course, the virus test, the COVID test, you know, I'm probably going to be demonetized now, but it is what it is. Most likely, Frank Nielakina probably won't be back this offseason. If I'm going to be completely real with you guys, if they do have enough faith in a guy of Luca Vildoza, who I'm actually a fan of. He's not really physically gifted. He's not this guy that's really athletically gifted like whatsoever, but he's a very smart basketball player. And some people may ask me, is he Pablo Pierzoni part two? Like, is he 2.0 of Pablo? First off, I don't think he's Pablo because you have to keep in mind, Pablo played overseas for a very long time and then came to the NBA. He was the oldest rookie in NBA history. He was 35 years old. While Luca Vildoza he is older for a rookie entering, but he is only 25 years of age. Yes, if he did not know, this man like has not played a game in the NBA, but I really like what he brings to the table. So we're going to be bring, breaking down here what Luca Vildoza does well. As we're going to start off on the defense, defensive side of the basketball, he is definitely a guy who's feisty on the defense side of the basketball. Like He plays his ass off. He does struggle when it comes to those twitchy guards, when it comes to on-ball defending, especially when a screen comes, like he can be caught up in that screen. It's not even that, that the screen's the problem. Them. it's just it's just that these herky jerky types of guards like we've like struggled with in the past like a Jeff Teague for example for some reason like a guy like Jeff Teague that's really herky jerky we've struggled with in the past but that's when our defense wasn't as good but yeah this is someone that's really going to try hard on the defense side of the basketball he does a really good job of reading passing lanes he really does a like great job like fighting over screens he knows when to go under he knows when to get go over he chases guys off of screens he's not a guy that's necessarily really gonna be able to really defend three-point shots of like shooting guards maybe at the like nba level of course because he does stand at six foot four he's not this ben simmons six foot ten point guard you know even though six foot four is tall for a point guard and maybe if he's like um facing up or whatever defending a smaller type of shooting guard or wing like a malik monk who is six three or six four but he actually gets good elevation on his shot so sometimes he can struggle defensively on these types of two guards that get a lot of elevation on their shot but this is someone who tries really hard on defense doesn't give up on a play whatsoever there is actually an example play i'll link i'll link the film video down below in the description he missed a shot didn't give up on the play did a really good job reading um the offensive player's eyes and came up with a steal and laid it up and in but i do like him defensively needs to get better and some certain things even though like i'm one of those people like i don't care how like athletically gifted you are there's really athletically gifted basketball players but they're not good on defense if you if you have the proper coaching if you're willing to defend you have the effort if you have the right technique i think he could be a good defender and i think he's going to enter the nba with the right instincts with the right attitude of course playing up against grown men that type of physicality um, even though there is some twitchier guards in the NBA, I think he'll do all right translating on that side of the ball. Now moving on to his jump shot, I actually really do like his jump shot, specifically in catch and shoot situations, as he did shoot 37% from downtown, which is a good clip to shoot at. If you did not know, the EuroLeague three-point line is the second longest to the NBA three-point line. It is longer than college because it is professional, you know, but yes, it is the second longest. You look at Luca Vildoza's mechanics, I really love his combination of like he uses enough up body but he doesn't really rely on it you know there's several players that really don't use their legs enough in their shot which you should but it's different for everyone some people like aligning their feet towards the basket some like put like put their feet to the side like a Stephen Curry everyone is different but I really do think he has really smooth fundamental mechanics of course back in like kindergarten you know the technique like beef or whatever or that term when it comes to your balance your eyes just like focusing in on your shot when it comes to your mechanics but he's really smooth coming off the screens he's actually um kind of consistent not he's not extremely consistent yet really scoring or performing off the dribble i'm not sure how that's going to translate to the nba when there's players in the nba that are really going to get up in your jersey but with the spacing of the nba 
I'm not going to say he's going to be even a better shooter because 37% is over the average clip of 36%, I believe it is, when it comes to NBA level. But he does have a smooth shot, and I really do like his mechanics, and that's what I like that he brings to the table. Now, getting into like one of my favorite things when it comes to Luka Vildoza is his court vision, his overall basketball IQ. Like I said, he's not the best of athlete, but geez, he's a very smart basketball player. He's literally a magician with the basketball. I actually had a really good example play when it came to my film breakdown video. It's literally like him looking off a of safety, like a quarterback looking off a of safety at the NFL level, college level, or high school level. Like he was just eyeing someone down the whole time, really trying to make him um, think he's going to drive to the cup or look for someone down low and then he just like sweeps a pass with, with one arm to the left wing and his teammate knocks down a three he's just a mag magician with the basketball and he knows when to be fancy and crafty with it but he also knows when to make the fundamental basketball play in the half court setting in transition he's an overall just absolute stud like passing the basketball and i love what luca vildoza um brings to the table he makes everyone around him better and he's even going to be just a great player when it comes to the locker room. Everything I hear that he just loves to win. He gets along with everyone so great. So maybe there is kind of a Pablo thing there when it comes to his overall leadership. This is someone who actually went out to win the MVP. He's just a born winner. I love what he brings to the table. But yeah, I'm not sure if his shot off the dribble is really going to translate to the NBA. But yes, yeah, just, just his overall court vision is absolutely amazing to see. And he's just very aware out there on the basketball court getting the defense to collapse, catching the defense like on their heels and just making the heads up play. He definitely plays like at his own pace, which just absolutely changes the game. Now we're going to get into like finishing at the cup. When I watch him play, he actually does a good job. Like, because when you're not the most athletically gifted player, like in the world, don't get me wrong. He's a solid athlete, but he's not like this tremendous athlete. Like that's really tall. Like a Ben Simmons, like when it comes to the point guard position, like playing a one through three, playing one through four, you know? So when I watch him play, like he actually does have a solid first step. He does a good job using a combination of crosses, setup crosses, like to get to his spots out there on the court and that's what you should be able to do when you're not as like athletically gifted like these players out here so yes i do think he is a fast enough quick step but there is sometimes like several situations that he is kind of too relaxed around the basket like he sees an open lane and he just kind of like throws it up there at times sometimes you would like to see him take it stronger to the to the basket open lane it looks like he just tries to like kind of floated up there sometimes and in a couple of plays i have seen he has proven he's the backboard but i'm just saying sometimes he could be like okay there's no one open down there and like in the lane so i think this is an easy layup it's going in and sometimes he doesn't use the backboard if you know what i'm saying and another thing i have concerns with when it comes to luca vildoza can he finish like with contact on him can he finish throughout contact because you see him get to the rack but sometimes if there is a big man in the paint like he tries to do this thing of being too fancy in the air and instead of like being like oh it's not there let me stop on a dime and kick it out like i got the defense to collapse here he tries to be too fancy and hang in the air too long and there's going to be more disciplined big man big man at the next level that really don't fall for that and they play straight hands up fundamental defense because they know they're like tall enough and they get them caught in the air for an up up and down and also when you're up there in the air and you're not really sure what you're going to do or if you're in like a really tight spot up in the air most likely it's going to result in a turnover or a really bad shot so yes he does need to get better of like taking the strong into the cup being more decisive with those situations and not being like too fancy now getting into luca vildoza's handle it may not be like on a string like a Kyrie or a stephen curry but let's be real it's really rare when you find a handle like that or even a jamal crawford because most likely that player will be close to like in the league or they would have been in the league already if you know what i'm saying because luca vildoza with his ability to pass the basketball spot up shoot like then if he had a handle like that he would be a good basketball player in my opinion at the nba level he may end up being a good player but we don't know he hasn't played a single game in the nba because if he had a handle like that his ability to create separation would be amazing but you could also have a handle and it's not effective you're just standing there in one spot but anyway i actually do like his handle it is very fundamental and it is very crafty he's not doing a bunch of behind the backs he's not doing a bunch of between the legs for no reason when he does do it between the legs or behind the back it is effective with this setup cross he's not gonna have plays that he absolutely breaks someone's ankles yes there is a couple plays like on his highlight film or like film in general that he does make defenders look silly it, he fakes going in one direction stops on a dime does a behind the back and gets the rack and he does a really good job when it comes to his reverses like around the rim using the backboard for his protection 
But yes, he does have a solid fundamental handle. I wouldn't say, like, it's fantastic. Maybe it kind of is, like, a Ricky Rubio's, you know, like, coming out of overseas. But even though Ricky Rubio was really crafty with it. But I do think Luca Vildoza does have a good enough handle for the next level. But we'll see how he is when it comes to the physicality, speed of the NBA, these big-time, like, grown men athletes. Of course, he did play up against grown men athletes, like, overseas but these guys are even faster when it comes to the nba level because don't get me wrong i'm not disrespecting the athletes overseas but there's quicker there's faster there's even stronger like more physical players like at the nba level even though i know there is a handful of overseas but let me just say there's more consistency but he definitely does have a crafty handle and it is good enough of creating separation we'll just see if it translates to the next level but we're getting someone who loves to win he loves his teammates. He's a very, very smart basketball player. I can't wait to see what he's going to bring to the Knicks. I'm not sure if he's going to play this season. Of course, still needs to pass like the virus test and all that. Make sure he's healthy. But yeah, he's played up to 25 years old when it can't, comes to like playing overseas. Smart player. Seems like a down-to-earth human being. And I can't wait to see what he brings. Thank you guys so much for the great amount of support. And peace out, y'all.